Hi everyone, Angela here. I'm using one bath towel to cut out two round hand towels. Cut away labels and tags. Don't include any of the finished edges on the towels. Start by cutting the length of the towel in half and then remove one of the layers. Fold the piece in half and then in half again without including the finished edges. Make a mark on the center of the fabric. From the center, measure across to the raw edge. Mine is 13 inches or 33 centimeters. Use your measurement to mark from the center all around to the other edge. Just make your marks about an inch and a half or two inches apart. Cut around through all the layers and then use this as a template to cut out the second piece. If you don't want to use a towel, you can also make them out of fabrics such as cotton or linen. Here I'm using 3 quarters of a yard or 0.8 meters of cotton waffle weave. Don't include the selvage in your towels, and because the fabric is thinner, this time you can fold and cut all the layers together. And then mark the centers of both pieces. To make the bias binding, cut away any selvage from a fat quarter or a fat flat. You can also use ready-made double-fold bias binding. Trim any edges that need squaring up. On your fabric, find the crosswise grain that has a little bit of stretch and the lengthwise grain that has no stretch. Cut a 2 inch or 5 centimeter wide strip along the lengthwise grain. From that strip, cut two 7 inch or 18 centimeter pieces for the loops. Lift the bottom corner and match the left edge to the top edge and crease along the fold. This 45 degree angle is the bias of the fabric. You can also find the bias by placing the 45 degree line along the bottom edge of the fabric and the long edge of the ruler will be the bias. Cut the fabric along that crease. We'll be cutting strips along the bias. Place the two bias edges together and then turn the fabric so that edge is vertical. Then carefully fold in half and half again, keeping those edges all lined up. Carefully cut two inch or five centimeter strips through all the layers. If you're finding this video helpful, make sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment below. I'd love to know where you're watching from. Remove the small corner pieces and open up the rest of the strips. Depending on the size of your towels, there should be enough binding for two. Most of the ends will have 45 degree angles on them already. Any that don't, just lay it down, place another on top, and then cut at the same angle. To join the pieces, you want to line up the angles at the ends like this. Flip one piece over so that right sides are together. I'm just going to draw the quarter inch or six millimeter seam allowance to show how the edges should be put together. You don't want the corners to match, instead slide it over so that the edges match at the ends of the seam allowance. Pin or clip in place. Put the edges together in the same way when the angles are in the opposite direction. You can just join them at the machine or join all the pieces together first. I'm using the Juki TL 2010Q sewing machine. The link for this and the tools I use are down in the description below. If you're in Australia or New Zealand, click the link for Echidna Sewing and Juki Junkies for North America. Start by sewing a few stitches first, and then push the corner right into the needle. Stitch together using a quarter inch or six millimeter seam allowance. There's no need to back tack, just keep stitching about an inch past the end of the seam. It's important to start and finish your stitching exactly where the edges meet. By doing that, the edges of the binding will be nice and straight. When it's not sewn from corner to corner, the sides of the binding won't be aligned. It's okay if it's off just a tiny bit, but you don't want it to look like this. Once all the seams are joined together, separate them with clippers or I just use the thread cutter on the side of my machine. Next, separate the seams and press them all flat. Trim away all the corners, even with the edge. 
To help fold the sides, I'm using a 1 inch or 25 millimeter wide bias tape maker. The tape goes in this wider end, gets folded along the sides, and then comes out half an inch wide. With the tape wrong side up, angle the end a bit and thread it through. If you have any problems, just use a pin or an awl to push the fabric through. Neaten up the sides and press a bit at a time. The folded sides should be even, with just a bit of space in between. If it helps, place a pin on the end to keep the tape in place while you press. When going over the seams, just make sure they're open and folded properly. I'm going to be showing you two different methods of attaching the bias binding without joining the ends. For the first method, fold the tape in half, matching the folded edges, and press. Turn off the steam so you don't burn yourself. I'll use the toweling for the first method. Open up the binding and then fold down the angled end about 3 eighths of an inch or a centimeter and crease. With right sides together, place it down on the towel matching the edges. Make sure you don't see the edge of the towel like this. It needs to be underneath the binding, otherwise you'll need to trim the towel later. Line up the crease to the inside edge of the foot and stitch just to the right of the crease. There's no need to back tack. Stretch the bias tape just a little as you match the curved edge. Just slowly work with a couple of inches at a time. Again, your stitching should be just beside that crease line. If you have one, you can use a magnetic seam guide. Just place it down on a bit of an angle. When you get close to the end, Overlap the bias tape until it's about half an inch past that corner, and then cut. Continue stitching just past the end of the bias tape, trim that corner from the edge, and then flip the towel over to the other side. Carefully fold over both layers together so that you have a nice smooth edge. Fold the binding around the towel, Make sure that folded edge is placed right along the stitch line and clip in place. If you need to, clip all around. Starting just before the join, have the folded edge of the tape in line with the inside edge of your presser foot and edge stitch all around, back tacking at the start and finish. The edge stitching should look pretty much the same on both sides. For the second method, we want the back of the bias binding to be a bit wider, so instead of matching the folded edges, offset it by about a sixteenth of an inch or one and a half millimeters. I'm using the thinner fabric for the second method. With the wider side underneath, cut the end of the binding straight across and open up. Place the edge of the fabric right in the center of the binding and fold it over. Pull the end out just a little bit and start edge stitching. Continue lining up the edge of the fabric with the inner edge of the binding, leaving that little space in the center so that it folds over easily. Again, stretch the binding a little bit as you go around the fabric. Because the back is wider, you'll be sure to catch the underside of the binding. When you're close to the end, trim away the start of the binding in line with the towel. Measure down about an inch from that cut and then cut your binding. Fold the end over and just pinch in the center a bit. Continue edge stitching to the end, making sure to cover the edges of the binding underneath and to catch the back of the binding, then back tack to finish. For a closed loop, have the piece wrong side up and then press the center and the sides in as you did with the bias. Open up. Match the short ends with right sides together and clip in place. Stitch with a quarter inch seam allowance, back tacking at the start and finish. Press the seam open and then fold all together again. 
Starting at the seam, edge stitch both sides of the loop, back tacking at the start and finish. With this join at the back, slide in the towel and then place the seam of the loop on that center mark. Next we'll stitch on either side of that seam. Start and finish your stitching in the middle of the loop, going back and forth, catching the edges. Trim the threads, then pull on the loop and stitch all the layers together about a quarter of an inch from the towel. I just think this extra step gives the loop a much nicer finish. For an open loop, press the center and sides, and then fold and press the ends in about quarter of an inch. Fold and press in half, matching the edges, and clip in place if you need to. From this end, measure across 2 inches or 5 centimeters and make a mark on the open end. Starting from this mark, edge stitch all around, pivoting at the corners and back tacking at the start and finish. When you're pivoting at the corners, make sure to push in the raw edges of the ends. At this mark, turn over the loop and draw a line across. With the join on the right hand side, slide in the towel and then place the line of the loop on top of that center mark. Then stitch on securely, finishing in the center of the loop. To add cam snaps, put the ends together and then take a cap and press it to mark the center. Make a hole through both layers and I'm adding a cap and stud to the shorter end and a cap and socket to the longer end. The towel with the closed loop will hang over a hook this way, so you could add something decorative or embroider something on the front here, and the towel with the open loop will hang over a bar this way, and this will be the front here. With all this area, you're sure to find a dry spot to wipe your hands. Thanks to Danielle for reminding me that they have round towels in France. Thanks again for watching, take care and see you in the next video.